Our lives are like rivers that flow into the sea. Jorge Manrique, Coplas a la Muerte de su Padre. Welcome back. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. Chapter 28 opens with another ridiculous sounding subtitle concerning things that Benengeli says will be known by he who reads them, if he reads them with attention. Is this absurd humor or what? Or could Cervantes be signaling something? Let's do as Benengeli says and read carefully. The chapter focuses on the increasingly tenuous relationship between master and servant. Sancho feels betrayed. In other words, the feudal bond between Don Quixote and Sancho has just been tested in the heat of battle, and Don Quixote's constant insistence on his squire's loyalty now seems hypocritical. First, Sancho slips off his ass. It's cinematographic. Once he had regained consciousness, he rode up to Don Quixote and let himself slip off his gray at Rocinante's feet, anxious, thrashed, and badly beaten. The narrator adopts Don Quixote's rhetorical style here. Don Quixote dismounted and didst tend to his squire's lacerations. Don Quixote then has the temerity to be angry with his squire. In an evil hour didst thou take to braying, Sancho. Sancho's response is brutal. I will silence my braying, but I will never keep silent about how knights errant flee and leave their good squires to be thrashed like privet or chaff at the hands of their enemies. Notice the milling theme from chapters five and eight of part one. Don Quixote justifies his actions with classical wisdom. He who retreats does not flee, because you should know, Sancho, that valor which is not drawn from the base of prudence is called recklessness. Here Don Quixote appeals to Aristotelian moderation, in medio virtus. But this contradicts his argument in chapter 24, where he had quoted Terence's phrase, the soldier who dies in battle is more esteemed than the one who survives in flight. Sancho complains of pain and Don Quixote pedantically states the obvious. Sancho's pain owes to the fact that the townsmen hit him on his back, which results in the most pain. And the more they hit him, the more pain he feels. Sancho now becomes more sarcastic than anywhere else in the novel. By God, your grace has cleared up for me a great doubt, and you have put it so beautifully too. By my body was the cause of my pain so mysterious that it was necessary to tell me that I hurt everywhere that I was struck. The tension between master and servant grows. Sancho is fed up. He anticipates Voltaire's warning against adventurism. I would do much better by myself, I say again, if I were to return home to my wife and children and support her and rear them with that which God has deigned to give me and not go chasing after your grace down dead end roads and trails and highways leading nowhere, short on drink and worse on food. Did you know the decay of the relationship between master and servant is contemplated throughout the Spanish Golden Age? See, for example, La Celestina or El Lazarillo de Tormes. Don Quixote calls his squire's bluff, telling him to leave. Notice the more formal, boss manner of address here. God forbid that I should stop you. You have my money and you can add up how long ago we left our village on this third sally. So calculate what you can and should earn each month and pay yourself by your own hand. Oops, Don Quixote has just placed the issue of Sancho's salary on the table again. What follows is an intense negotiation. If we read carefully here, we learn a lot. Sancho normally works for Tomé Carrasco, the father of Sansón. He receives a salary. I earned two ducados each month in addition to meals. The squire then lists the harsher conditions of his present occupation. Don Quixote agrees. Suppose I confess that all you say, Sancho, is correct. How much do you think I should pay you beyond what Tomé Carrasco did? Sancho calculates further. I think if your grace added two reales to my monthly salary, I would consider myself well paid. Then he adds six more reales per month 
to cover the promised island, which has yet to materialize, and comes up with a total. As for fulfilling your grace's word and promise made to grant me governorship of an isle, it would be right to add another six reales, which comes to a total of 30. Note the amazing amount of information here regarding labor rates and the values of distinct currencies. We now know, for example, that a ducado is worth 11 reales. Quixotic Mission How much does Sancho Panza earn working for Tomé Carrasco? A. 2 reales per month B. 2 maravedis per month C. 2 ducados per month Correct answer, C. Two ducados per month. Remarkably, Don Quixote accepts the proposal of 30 reales per month. Very well. Calculate, Sancho, the rate times the amount and determine what I owe you and pay yourself, as I have said, by your own hand. But negotiations break down over the time of Sancho's service. Don Quixote says that they have been traveling for 25 days. Sancho rightly wants to count the previous sally in part one, but he calculates an outrageous total period of service. It has to be more than 20 years, give or take three days. This is 240 times as much as Don Quixote has just agreed to pay. Don Quixote concedes a bit, agreeing to two months of total service, but he maintains his feudal position and again points out that there are no salaries for squires in the novels of chivalry. Where have you seen or read that any squire of a knight errant has engaged his master in, you should give me a little more each month for my services? He adds that if Sancho finds such evidence, he will submit to having it nailed to his forehead and having his face must four times. Messing with faces will be important in future episodes, as will this salary negotiation. In the end, Don Quixote indicates the Apollean subtext of all this. He submits that Sancho is an ass. You are an ass, and you will always be an ass, and you will end the course of your life as an ass. Sancho admits as much and retracts his request. My lord, I confess that in order to be a complete ass, I lack but the tail, and if your grace wants to attach it to me, I will consider it well placed, and I will serve you as an ass for the rest of the days of my life. Our heroes make up, rest, and then proceed east in search of the banks of the famous Ebro. That's all for now. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapter. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.